everyone, Professor Cadenis here. I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk to you about how to write your place of importance essay. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that and then just do a brief grammar review and then we'll be all set. So um, the place of importance essay is really an important and really good place to practice being specific. So when you're writing your paragraphs, I would like you to use lots of little narrow details, use people's names, use colors, use things you can hear and see to build a really compelling essay, um, much like the essays My Room and The Corner Store. And you guys have some great, great, great brainstorming going on so far about The Corner Store. Um, and about uh, my room and thinking about how you're going to be writing your essay. So here's a couple of options. The first one is to organize your essay by the senses, by um, using the senses to, as a way to organize your essay. So for example, so how to write your place of great importance. So sensory organization. Okay, so th if you wanted to use this method, what you could do is you could start by saying maybe everything you can see and have a paragraph be about that. And then your next paragraph could be about touch. And then your paragraph after that could be about things you could taste. And then about maybe things that you can hear and then maybe things you can smell, and then maybe you want to talk about the ghosts or the ancestors in that you can sense in a given space, like the sixth sense, intuition. Okay, that would be kind of fun if you wanted to do that. And so what you would do is in the first paragraph, you'd you, first you would identify a, a pretty narrow place, like maybe it's a park, or maybe it's a room, or maybe it's the... Um, front of a house, like the outside porch of a house or something like that. And then you would go by the senses first, everything that you can see, then touch, taste, hear, smell, intuition, or you could maybe pick, um, you know, maybe three of these and then use it um, that way. The other kind of organization is you could do a kind of thematic organization. And you can say something, you might say something like, um, my living room is really important to me because of all the wonderful moments I've shared with people. So the theme here would be moments shared with people. And then you would talk about one moment in the living room, then another moment in the living room. And um, as you're doing this, the living room does have to play in in some way. So like if you're telling a story, you want to say something like, well, we were all watching the Super Bowl on the television in the living room. And that's the moment when someone proposed to me or that's the moment when I just had such a great time connecting over the chicken wings that were um super spicy and they were so spicy. We loved them, but we had to have 12 mints afterwards, something like that. So, um, and then, you know, you do a third moment in the living room. Okay, so that's the thematic organization. Um, you can also organize it if you want to. So the spatial organization. So that pattern would be something like, um, you are rather than going by the senses in your paragraphs you're like um giving us like a tour of a space and maybe that's using the senses one per paragraph but maybe it's just like everything you can see so what you can see in the front of the space i will say that for me describing visuals is way easier than describing anything else um it's I think for me, it's a wonderful challenge to you to try to figure out how to talk about how something smells or how, what it feels like. Since I'm such a visual person, it's hard for me sometimes to do that. You might want to stretch yourself a little bit and see if you can incorporate all the senses, but you can also just go with whichever sense you like the best and you kind of move um, to the different parts of the space. What you can see in the side of the space. And when I say side, maybe you're talking about a closet 
right? What you can see in the back of the space, maybe a window. Okay. Um, and there's, there's other forms of organization too. You, well, all I'm saying here is come up with your pattern of organization because what you don't want when you're giving a lot of details is an essay that's all over the place. Because if it's so narrow, um, we want this to be narrow and really specific, but you're going to lose your reader a little bit if you are unable to give focus. So your reader's going to be like all over the place with you if there's no pattern of organization. So you want to narrow your space somewhat so that you're not talking about all of New Jersey or all of New Mexico um, or all of the ocean, right? You want to narrow it a little bit so it's manageable and then you want to come up with a pattern of organization. After you do this, after you write things down about, you know, like what your pattern of organization is, I would just take one or two notes under each one about like what you are going to say in that paragraph, right? So you can say like, okay, I definitely want to talk about the trophies. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about the wall of um, posters, okay, and I definitely want to talk about uh, the bedspread, okay, and then so that you know, you know, that that's what you're going to talk about in that paragraph, and then, you know, if you're zooming into touch, okay, I'm definitely going to talk about the feel of the bed, um, I'm going to talk about how it felt to hold the hand of my nephew in the room when he was crying, you know, something like that. Okay, so you want to make a plan before you write this, I would say. You can brainstorm just like free write everything and then um, from there narrow it, sort of highlight the things that relate to vision, highlight the things that relate to touch, and or, you know, highlight where uh, the themes like, okay, I'm talking about one moment here, I'm talking about a different moment here. And then based on the different color highlighters, you can then reorganize it that way. Um, let me know if you have questions about that. I'm really looking forward to reading what you have to say about this for sure. And I also wanted to just give a brief review again about grammar, particularly identifying subjects and verbs. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit here and give a little refresher course oops, about grammar. Since we're doing, again, making sure to avoid run-ons and fragments, um, I do want to just make sure we're good with identifying subjects and verbs. Okay, so what I did notice and which I, what I often notice is that people are still trying to think of the subject of the sentence as the topic of the sentence, the most important part of the sentence. It is not. The grammatical subject, I repeat, is not the most important part of the sentence or what the overall sentence is about, okay? So if you're looking for that, you're going to get it wrong maybe about half the time. So it's really not that. That's not how you look for it. So to find the subject and verb, the first thing you're going to do is to almost randomly look for an action or a state of being. So if we say something like, she is happy, we know that is is going to be the verb because it's the state of being. What is her state of being, right? That she is being happy. To be is the verb here and she is being happy. So is is going to be the verb. And then the subject is going to be who or what is being happy, okay? So the subject of the sentence is she. Now you could argue that this idea of happiness is the most important part of the sentence. That's absolutely right, but it's not the subject of the sentence. The subject of the sentence is simply who or what is either doing or being the verb. Okay, so when we have something like she walks to the store um, at midnight. So when you have a sentence like this, you can first look for the verb. What's the action that's happening? Okay, it's walks because it's the active thing that's happening. You can envision the walking, walk, 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 okay? And who is doing the walking? She is doing the walking, so she is the subject. You really can't find the subject unless you first look for the verb. So you find the verb first and then you see who or what is doing that. Now, what we have here is a prepositional phrase, in fact, two of them, that just tells you where and when. 
So the where and when are never part of the verb. To the store just shows you where and when is at midnight. So none of these are going to be your verb. In fact, to is never a verb, in is never a verb, at is never a verb. They're always prepositions. On is never a verb, okay? So when you're looking for verbs, you want to look for the action or the state of being. Action is a lot easier to find for sure. Okay, so I'm wishing you luck also with continued work on run-ons and fragments, but please, please, please just know that the subject of the sentence is not the most important part of the sentence. It's not the topic of the sentence. It's just a grammatical point. Okay, knowing what the subject is and what the verb is, you need to know that so that you can have good subject verb agreement so that you know that the singular subject goes with the singular verb here. Okay, singular subject, he, she, it, the form is walks. Okay, and also so that you can identify complete thought verb subject when you're trying to avoid run ons and fragments. Okay, so this is not like an intellectual exercise in any way in trying to understand what's important about the sentence. It's just for identifying the parts of the sentence so that you can have grammatically correct sentences that are written in standard English. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck this week. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please contact me.